How's it? Hang this. Welcome You're to welcome. Mon- You're welcome to Welcome to Mongus Max Hawaii. The <laughs> Tap. Open it. Open it. The ghost, pop. The ghost tube is going. The ghost tube is going. Uh, yeah. How's it again? I don't know if I did that. See, I had these um, headphones on because I was um, checking out the microphone because I'm still trying to figure out how to fix this thing. I gotta plug it down. Yeah, it's just uh, a little weird to do that with that on. How anyway. did you get here? Ah, I sat down. I woke up. That blood. <clears throat> Anyways, today is Saturday, and I thought we'd do something a little bit different and um, review the movie Dune Part 2. Dune Part 2. Dune too Too long is what it is. It's two hours and 45 minutes. And yes, there's going to be spoilers, because I'm just going to talk about the movie. And... Um, I don't know. It's Dune. There's no such thing as spoilers. Everybody knows about Dune, except also everyone's confused about Dune as well. You know all about it, and you're still confused. <laughs> We're going to get back down to that confusion and more. But I'm just going to do a little movie review, and I'll do a little vlog and news a bit at the end, but let's, let's do that later. This might take long. Brace yourselves. It's not as, it's not as long as the movie Dune. And we got out of the movie, uh, my friend and his uncle and I, we're all you know, friends, we go to movie watching, and we get out of there, and his uncle goes, I'm done. Done with Dune. And I was like, Dune, Dune, did you do it? What are you doing? Anyways, Dune. Now, um, Dune Part 2. When it said Part 2, I thought, well, what happened to Part 1? Because I, I am a child a boomer, a child of the late, you know, end of the tail boomer. I'm at the end of, uh, I saw the 1985 directed by David Lynch, Dune. That's the one I saw, because it was a big deal, because Sting was in it from the police. Do, 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 do. And they paid him a big money to pay Fade Rauta, one of these, uh, the nasty, a nasty villain guy that goes into the knife fight duel. And, uh, kind of James Dean. <laughs> but, Sting was in. It's like, well, you're kidding. How did they get that guy to do a movie thing, you know? And and uh, the guy that was playing um, some um, really popular soap opera, I forgot which one it was, was the lead character, uh, Mwadib, Paul Atreides, Mwadib, later on. And, and so it was like the, the movie. But they did that movie, and there was so much material in the Dune world, the Duneiverse, that's a real word. I didn't make that up. Duneiverse. <laughs> In the Duneiverse, there's so much material that there's everyone had a trouble putting it. Everyone had they had a trouble. They couldn't put it into a film. They couldn't put it into a movie. So David Lynch's version is kind of afterwards. You kind of going, what the heck happened? What was that? And. There's some cool stuff in it and all that. It's really kind of like cool. Even Vax von Saito is in the flick. It's like they always do star-studded cast with these things. And uh, there's a lot of narration. And now we're on the desert planet of Arrakis. And on the desert planet, there's lots of sand dunes. And the spice in there that prolongs life and gives visions of the future. I, and you're just like... Uh, because it's narration, right? And, uh, I don't know. Even the guy, the director, David Lynch, is like, Ugh, I'm sorry, I can't believe I made that movie. Everyone beforehand that tried... Come back, elderly. Y- yeah. Everyone that tried to make this movie before was, like, just having problems with it. It was the movie that nobody could put to film. <laughs> That's what it came to be. But anyways, I'll tell you one thing about in 1975, a whole bunch of French film consortium people got their money together and they're going to put Dune, which was a 1965 novel, melded from two novels, and then there was five sequel novels, and then 
more see this Dooniverse. <laughs> but they're gonna take the Dune novel, which was nobody liked it at first, but then people started to like it, and there's lots of people saying this is the greatest novel. Uh, uh, Arthur C. Clarke, science fiction writer, says it's outside. I I've never seen anything like this, um, you know, since Lord of the Rings from Arthur C. Clarke. And J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote Lord of the Rings, said, I don't like it. I'm not going to review that book because I'm biased and I don't like it. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff. But the book came out, got big. They, in 1975, like I said, the film people from France got together and they were going to have a 14 hour, 14 hour feature movie. 14 hours. I was like, what the hell? It's a, huh? And it was going to have the role of Atreides was, I don't know, Brontus Jawonski, but Salvador Dali was going to be in the movie <laughs> as a Saddam Shaddam the <laughs> Fourth, the emperor. And, um, they were going to pay him a hundred thousand. He's like, Dali, Salvador Dali. Okay, I, I, a hundred thousand dollars an hour. And they were going to try to fit it in there. Um, Orson Welles was going to play Baron Harkonnen, the, I think he's the, called the floating fat guy. He's so fat that he has these little things that help him float around so he can move. Uh, David Carradine was going to be Duke Leto, the main Duke of House of Atreides and Arrakis. And, uh, I don't know, there's, it's just, oh, and Fade Ralta, the, the, the knife fight dude. Fade Rotto is going to be played by Mick Jagger. <laughs> they, they couldn't get that one off the ground. Too bad they couldn't shorten it up and, you know, there would have been some good thing for like, oh my god, Salvador Dali and Mick Jagger. That just goes to show you how much was in the bringing to Dune to the big screen. And um, they attempted in 1985 a pretty good one that's the one i remember and now it's they got cgi and they're just like doing it and they did lord of the rings they, they're gonna do this one some of them it's possible avatar and it's a little like avatarish now the movie itself two hours and 45 minutes yeah okay it's long yeah and there's some star studded cast in there too well uh, let's see who do we have well first let's let's give a little premise a little background the guy that wrote this thing, Frank Herbert, Sherbert, Herbert, Herbert, Frank Herbert, Herbert, not to be confused with Sherbert. Now, that guy was from Oregon, and he saw some dunes, sand dunes in Oregon that they were trying to plant uh, poverty grass in there, and to make so the dunes don't shift. And somebody's like, oh, he wrote an article to the newspaper. All these and people are saying the sand dunes are going to shift. They could swallow up the whole cities and towns. They're over-exaggerating. Well, it gives them an idea. And it's kind of an ecological idea, like ecology and sand dunes. And he wrote an article and to the paper. But then he just kind of got rolling on this dune thing. And he decided to write the science fiction thing. And it turned into... Two novels. One was uh, the Dune World, and the other one was Prophet of Dune. These were both written in like um, I don't know, 63ish, 64ish, and those two books came together and became Dune. Dune. Consolidated in 1965. So there it was. Um, I don't know about this guy, but one thing I do know is he's from the 60s and. Um, he was into magic mushrooms. So he's into shrooms. So the whole story is explained by the guy was a shroomer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I confess, back in the day, I was big into that one time. And um, I still didn't see that. <laughs> but spice on Arrakis and they see visions. And when you have... Um, this mind-altering, vision-producing spice, you can space travel. So, yeah, space tripping, <laughs> visions, the dunes are moving. Okay, we get it, shrooms. <laughs> okay, so, and also, um, this whole plot 
of this guy, Paul Atreides. So there's there's two planets, okay? Good guys, bad guys. You see, there's basically two planets. One of them is the desert planet of Arrakis that has the spice that turns everybody's eyes blue, which might be alluding to um, World War II with propaganda turning everyone into blue-eyed Aryans. I don't know. And then there's the bad planet, the Harkonnen planet, and they are just like the cruel and unusual, vicious, I don't know, homicidal take over the universe, Nazi-ish kind of bits. And that's the Harkonnen. So I'm thinking this guy wrote this book after World War II. Now, from that, we have, like, I would think the Harkonnen planet looked a little bit like these are the Nazi guys, because every time, this is 1965, you wanted, I mean, 1945, fresh in the memory, you want bad guys? Who are the bad guys? Well, how about those guys? <laughs> Remember World War II? <laughs> no, those guys are bad guys, and so the Harkonnens, I think, are this totally cruel planet based a little bit on them. They're trying to take over this, the, the profits from mining this supply from this natural resource from Arrakis. You don't want to give it on Arrakis, the spice. And that's a desert planet, and it's ruled by the House of Atreides with Duke Leto, the first Duke of uh, Atreides. So Paul is his son. That's it. Don't do shrooms. Drugs are bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay so um yeah so uh mm, so they're trying to get the spice so they have this it's and an inter a couple interesting things is they have this benerac uh something or other this uh, uh motherly royal um reverend mother priesthood it's sort of like the ultra nuns Kind of thing and that's like they're trying to control the bloodlines kind of genetic genetic breeding just like it's like nazis genetic breeding blue eyes when you take the spice you get blue eyes i'm like going man there's overtones but one of the major overtones is islamic it's like the dunes are desert there's a limited resource spice aka oil and a lot of the language came from Arabic language and things of that nature. And so, yeah, um, if you are trying to get rid of Islamophobia, I mean, this is a movie for you. <laughs> There's, it's a very overtone of that, and that's done on purpose. Nazi thing, I don't think I was um, close. Shrooms, yeah, that's real. <laughs> that's a nice thing. And uh, <clears throat> that they have these... Um, uh, big actors in this movie as well uh for example yeah so um yeah you get stuck full of uh great um actors in this one one of them is uh the well the evil baron he's the floating fat man he's so overweight he has these little things that keep him afloat and float around and stuff like that and that guy is the exorcist priest from the exorcism of Emily Rose. <laughs> and, oh gosh. And, of course, the emperor of the universe is uh, Christopher Walken. So, deer hunter. Mow! Mow! <laughs> yeah, um, it's not Max von Sydow, but... The priest from The Exorcist of Elmer Lee Rose was the... To your left. Uh, and um, Fade Rauta, I don't even know who that guy is. He's just scary. He's from somewhere, though, I'm sure. <laughs> and, and Thantos is in the movie, and Drax from Galax... I said Drake. I said Drax from Galaxy... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So there's, you know, you're going to see uh, 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 people that you say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But the movie itself, very visual. It's very, uh, you get into the, the thing of Paul Atreides turning into this messiahic uh, person called uh, uh, 
Paul Moadib Atreides, who's the Quisarch Satarach. So, in order to be the Cuisinart Hadit Rack, is, uh, is, it's like, um, Paul, um, the Reverend Mother, um, is so Reverend Mother, they, and then that bloodline, when they give birth, they can choose the sex of the baby. Okay. <laughs> so, and it's a, the baby was supposed to be a girl, because it's the Reverend Mother line. But uh, somehow the the uh, you know the the girl giving birth was she's like no I'm gonna make it a boy because she was liking the guy Nito or I don't know uh, Salvador Dali Orson Welles I forgot who it was <laughs> it was Drax no it was Thanos <laughs> Thanos is the guy's uh, former training military training partner so like the old training military training buddies. <sighs> okay, um, where am I? So, Paul Atreides was supposed to be a girl, but she thought and made it a guy, a girl, a boy. <laughs> so, uh, okay, Paul Atreides was supposed to be a girl. There. But he popped out a boy, and that was intentional. So, there's... Run. The Quisart, the Quisinart, the Quisart Satirac is the prophecy being fulfilled that it's a boy reverend mother, a male reverend mother, who can survive the drinking of the spice, uh, uh, the spice juice from the great sandworms, <laughs> which was always a thing in the movie. They did a pretty good job of that in this movie. So, um... Yeah, see, like Marvel's got like superheroes like Spider-Man or Thor or something like this. Uh, Iron Man. I am Iron Man. I said that once and uh, I had to say that line. We played Iron Man as a song, the Black Sabbath song in high school when I was in a rock band. I had to get up to the microphone. Hey, say hi, I'm Iron Man. True. Before, you know, the movies. <laughs> But those superheroes, like Marvel superheroes, are um, like superheroes. But imagine the superhero that's a messiah come to save everyone and the planets in the universe. That's Paul Mordeed. Now, um, this idea from Frank Sherbert, Herbert, Herbert, Frank Herbert, that idea came from, yes, Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> because... He took the rabble rebellion guys and and they kind of worshipped Lawrence of Arabia, but he was just basically a military leader and led him to victory. So Paul Adib, even though he has prophecy being fulfilled, Disgusting. he leads the Fremen or the the rebellion on Arrakis because it's their planet, their desert planet, the spice. They're invading, trying to take the spice. So he leads the rebellion and also fulfills the prophecy, riding the great sandworm and becomes the Cuisinart had it. Um, yeah, because, you know. <laughs> so if you like Dune, this is great, right? If you like Dune, that, that stuff. <clears throat> you are funny. Oh, thank you for being uh, saying that. But if you like Dune, this is great because it has all the stuff of, um, you know, all the material. And part two, um, I didn't see part one, so I don't know. But part two has it all in there. It has the stuff in there. The invasion thing, the boo 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 boo. It has a very, uh, it's very, very visual, so it's really super cool. Oh, and I must warn you about the planet killer. The Planet Killer is the soundtrack. They play ultra low frequency, extremely elf. Elves come out, extremely low frequency. And it shakes your seat, shakes your skull, and you're in Arrakis now. It's like boom, boom, boom. It's so much. The booming boom, boom is like, whoa. Is it like that? Hey, it's boom box all the way. It's like the planet boom box, planet killer. I'm just making that out now. But that's, yeah. 
there's that it's much more visual uh and all of that cool stuff and the stuff of dune is in there they're able to put it all in there can you hear him they do have a cast of characters but their character development kind of failed in a lot of ways now i'm not going to compare it 85 like david boring. lynch dune they had they threw in star-studded characters but you kind of gave a crap about the characters because you're kind of it's pushed on you like a soap opera. It's like, like, oh. And then the little girl comes in at the end. He is the Cuisinart Tatarak. You know, and it's like, what the hell was that? And it, is, it has a drama of Paul Atreides turning into the Messiah Cuisinart. <laughs> so, Why? It has a, oh. And it rains on Arrakis. Spoiler alert. It rains and turns the desert into an ocean. Planet. It's like greens and oceans, and they showed that. This one they didn't. It's like the desert, imagine their waves. <laughs> but um, his character development didn't happen into the. But because if you're kind of a, you know. If, if you're like the Gen X guy and don't feel down about your speech, yourself up. This is a great movie because the Paul Atreides is like Gen X, <laughs> and he he gets he falls in love with the girl, but then he says um, that he's gonna marry the emperor's wife, some at the end, and so he make so he stiffs the girl and turns out kind of like makes him out to be a dick, you know. And it doesn't have that messiah thing after the. I mean, you don't have that. Oh, aw. It it sort of putters out at that point. I don't know how. I mean, they tried. They tried to have him stand there with the cape flapping in the wind and the stuff going on. But it didn't have that feel. The 85 one did a little bit have that feel. It's like, what's going on? You're kind of like, oh my gosh, ooh, ooh. But this one is a little, like, it could have done it, but somehow, I don't know, it didn't do that. So there it is. Um, <clears throat> Dune-ish. Um, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I, there's, I mean, there's so much to say. Sure. Yeah, sure. There's so much to it that, um, I don't know. It's worth it, though. It's worth going to see. It's two, it's almost three hours, so plot out your time, but eh, it's worth it. Maybe not IMAX. You don't have to do the IMAX. Just see it right now. It's fine. I mean, it's not worth 24 bucks. No hell. Well, but a little, little, little Hawaii news. Pencils down. They're they're having the um, SAT go digital. Wow! And here's what I want to point out. Yay! Volleyball. Sure. Oh sure. The UH volleyball guys won in their tournament this game against uh, Grand Canyon, but Grand Canyon was ranked number one. So inside this tournament, which was a tough tournament, they won the number one. They won number one. So they're doomed down and done. Doom down done. They so no, they're not done. But yeah. Yay for um UH volleyball. And you know, a little maybe back in the day here. Oh my gosh, when you were to relax, just sit down with some kimonos. These are back in 1959 when Hawaii just became a state. Oh Burmese but from Vietnam with their speech in the University of Hawaii Orientation Center. This is how you say how is it? <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, well, America, send it back. Okay. Well, we're just... Huh? Legal drug uses. That's the sewers for for legal drugs, what? Yeah. Time to break stigmas behind marijuana use. It may be time for U.S. to consider legalizing marijuana instead of reclassifying it as a Schedule 3 drug. It should be treated as a controlled substance like alcohol, but not to be put on the list of scheduled drugs. It is far Where less... Am I? It is far less... You're on Arrakis. It is far less dangerous than alcohol, which is a poison. By regulating and taxing a marijuana, the state do does with alcohol, there should be strict government oversight and added revenue. Federal taxation of marijuana could be a significant money maker. That would be also encourage people who have not used it due to Help existing me. prohibitions to give it a try and test its purported health benefits. Stuart Shimazu Kapahulu. Oh, gee, thank you, Stuart. Uh, yeah, 
go for the little spice. <laughs> no, there is some health benefits due to marijuana, and it was made a scheduled drug at uh, Nixon administration because he was trying to get those hippies because they're trying to take over Arrakis. <laughs> that's what that's what was happening. Anyways, aloha. Sorry it was long. Here you go. Aloha. Thank you. Okay, remember the water planet. Okay. Oh, the Guizard Satarak. Guizard. Aloha to all everybody. Aloha. Bye now. Aloha.